In this 10 minute video, you will find your art style. Victory. Finding your art style can almost seem impossible. <sighs> and making it uniquely yours at the same time is the hard part. Before you watch the rest of this video, I just want you to commit to drawing a mess. Color outside of the lines, have fun with it. That's what being an artist is. Back to the video. A big source of inspiration for me was comics. In fact, when I first started drawing, I was so sure I was going to become a comic book artist. I'll refer to them as we discuss all the important phases of finding your unique style. I will also refer to comic book artists that were inspirational in helping me define my style, the right type of references to use to find your style, and how to practice and develop your art style long after watching this video. First up, we have the Magneto phase. This is all about assembling all of your favorite artists that inspire you together. <laughs> Mine all happen to be comic related, but yours can be in any genre, 3D, traditional, anything. A few of my favorites are Adam Hughes, Michael Turner, Mark Brooks, and Matteo DeLongis. If you don't have a large list of your favorite artists, Pinterest, DeviantArt, and obviously there's tons of artists on Instagram. If you're looking for comic book artists, websites like Comic Vine, Comic Art Gallery, I will have links to all those websites below and feel free to check them out. Another part of this phase is finding some great references. Now, when you're trying to find your style, you wanna find some studio lighting. It's gonna give you a lot more visibility of what you're drawing. My favorite website to find images like this is called Deposit Photo action poses, men, women, dark skin, Hispanic, Asian. Pinterest is also a really good place to look for references. You're gonna get a lot of images. A lot of these have really good lighting situations, very natural looking. So I usually will scroll through the feed to see what stands out to me. I'll click that image, right click, save image as. Sometimes it saves it as a WebP file, which means It'll just open up the website link and it won't really save it for you. So in those instances, I'll just screenshot the web page so that I have the image. These images, although they look nice, are not always high quality. So just pair that in mind. So here's the reference that I ended up choosing. The main thing is you want something that has what they call beauty lighting. So the skin tone is very even. There's not a lot of shadowing and you can see all the features of the face very clearly. You want somebody looking directly at the camera and that's going to help you to translate all of your references and inspirations into this drawing. When it comes to finding your reference picture, I would say don't take any longer than five to 10 minutes. Allow yourself to search and look, but Pinterest, from my experience, has always been a great place to find images quickly. Set a timer for five to 10 minutes and get in and get out. Hold on to your reference picture for now and we'll come back to it later. Next up, the Jean Grey phase or the declutter phase. Now that you have selected all of the work that inspires you to draw and create, it's time to analyze why you selected this work. It can be shocking to see what you find out in this phase. So look for the features of the face that you like the most out of the art that you selected. Face shape, proportions, even emotion. It's important to take note of why you like these artists so much and also realize that there are pieces from many artists that you can appreciate. This will help you avoid idolizing one artist and becoming a direct clone of one artist. Okay, so let's dissect all of the artists that I mentioned before. With Adam Hughes, I really like how he draws the eyes of his characters. There's something about the way the eyelashes look on his eyes. It's like they're a character in themselves. Mark Brooks also has this. I'm sure there's some inspiration there between the two of them. I really like the way they draw their eyes. Michael Turner, another artist that I really adore, the way that he draws the bodies of his characters and even the face shape. I think the face shapes here are more youthful. I think that's more like the way I want my drawings to feel. Even the way that he draws the hair, I like it a bit better than I would say a Adam Hughes or a Mark Brooks. With Joe Matarera's work, it really just comes down to this anime type aesthetic. The way he does the hair and just all the features, it just has this really cool vibe to it that I like so much. Kenneth Rockefeller has this really easily identifiable color style that is so fun to look at. When it comes to Matteo, everything. I like everything. There's just something about very simplified and looking at his work really makes me excited. I think he embodies what I 
like most about the other artists that I mentioned. It makes me want to draw and I think it connects to an inspiration that I had much earlier in life. I was really into wrestling and one of my favorite wrestlers was Lita. Mateo's style to me has this punk rock feel that Lita was a big part of that inspiration for me. It influences a lot of the work that I do and in fact it's a common theme throughout most of my work. Don't forget to take note of subcultures that you're influenced by. That can be a big part of your overall style. In videos about finding your art style, I feel like the video ends as if you're done discovering and exploring your potential art style after the video ends. And in reality, this can be quite a long process. There is a style that already comes natural to you when you draw. And some of the styles that you selected to be a part of your new unique style will take a bit of time to get used to. So give yourself that time. Which goes right into our next phase, which is the rogue phase. The rogue phase, this is all about copying the art that we looked at before. You're gonna choose an artist that stands out to you and we're going to copy their exact style to the T. Feel free to redraw or rework an old drawing or start from scratch. That reference picture that we talked about at the beginning of someone looking directly at the camera, hold on to that. We're gonna get into that right after this. So I grabbed my sketchbook and I have not drawn in a sketchbook in years but here's a drawing that I did in my sketchbook and it was of Morgan from Darkstalkers. When I looked at this work I realized how bad the proportions were so I wanted to rework it in the style of Mark Brooks. So I found some of his sketches and I pulled up one that looked similar to the vibe I was trying to go for. Same eyes, nose, mouth to see if I liked it. Don't worry about making a finished drawing, just keep it rough. If you want to do line work like I did and overdo, feel free to, but you don't need to. I did add some color, I did like this aesthetic, but ultimately it wasn't something I wanted to continue in my style. Now I know. What this will do is this will get that out of your system that wants to duplicate their work. Just duplicate it completely. And while you're doing this, take note of the features that you enjoy drawing the most. Find your style as you feel through performing and completing their style. I would only suggest copying somebody else's style for study. This is an internal thing for you to learn how best to do your style and the things that you like and don't like and want to add and don't want to add within your own style. Next up is the apocalypse phase and it's going to be survival of the fittest. All of the things that you learn from copying and duplicating the styles of the artist previously, we're going to apply your favorite parts into this drawing. Grab that reference and let's get started. So when I'm drawing this, I'm thinking about those eyes that we talked about before that Adam Hughes and Mark Brooks does and thinking about the way I want the mouth to look and the way I want the face shape to look. Add all of those elements in and see what they look like together. Another important thing to remember is there may be some variation. Even the reference that you're using may inspire you to add or take away different elements that you were originally going to have be a part of your style. This really helps you to demystify like, wow, this artist is amazing and they still can be, but it allows you to say, okay, I, I really like what it looks like on theirs, but drawing it, I didn't enjoy it as much. Or, you know what, uh, it just doesn't feel like me. I think the eye should look like the eye of this other artist. Think about this phase as if your drawings are answering questions in your head. Take your time. If this is your first time drawing these features, think the more you draw these features, the more your brain is slowly downloading how to draw it. It may take three or four times to draw the eyes in the ways that you like it, and that's normal. You're getting closer to finding your art style. Remember, drawing is the fun part. Next up is the mystique phase, and this phase is all about bringing it all together. It's important to be able to understand how to draw these same features and multiple angles. You're not only going to do the front view, but the side view and the three quarter view. It's almost like you're solidifying all that you've learned, applying it to multiple different angles that you will use often when drawing. Drawing these features at a different angle can be challenging. So just like we did before, find these artists, drawing at different angles, see what you like, what you don't like, mix and match and unlock your style. 
Finding your art style takes time and it evolves over time. So whatever you land on today, a year from now, or two years from now, it may look completely different. So allow yourself to have a style today and evolve it as you go. Think of this as an opportunity to take your skills to another level.